the purple dude from McDonald's. <laughs> from what? Right? The purple dude from McDonald's. McDowell's or hell? McDonald's? I don't remember McDonald's. what the name was. The purple dude from McDonald's. Yeah. I don't remember the name of the He's person. Saying, Yo, what kind of laughing sound like? <laughs> <laughs> it's the... <laughs> Is that it? Is that the it cloud? The Michael Jackson bad Is video. it? Really? All right. So, again, he's the dude that hangs out with the hamburger. Y'all know who I'm Grimace? talking about. Grimace? Grimace. Yeah, Grimace. There you it look is. look like Grimace, bro. I did not look like Grimace. Like a, like a sexy Grimace. <laughs> a he, sexy he's Grimace? He's Grimacing. Half He's Grimacing. <laughs> you got a Grimace for the people. I don't even remember what Grimace looked like. I, am, I didn't know that was a character <laughs> until you guys said it right now. Damn. Yeah. I, feel I, like half swag. I remember the hamburger. You never had a chicken nugget. <laughs> I remember the hamburger, but he had a sidekick. Wait, we're live, Marv. We are live. Oh snap! <laughs> you, you missed the intro. I, I was too focused. I'm fully focused, man. Oh, All right. Man. Anyway, what's up to everybody that's in the chat? Before we start off the show, um, let's do announcements, and then we're gonna do some other things. Actually, let's start the chat. Who's in the chat right now? Can you stop doing the poll? I'm for asking a second? them if they think I look like Grimace. <laughs> I need to know. This is important. <laughs> oh, don't Yo, forget. we have a very short episode. All right. You need to hurry up and do this. We got to shout out the one we missed last from last I, week. I know. Okay. okay. All right. All right. So, All right. who's in the chat right now? I just want to say what's up. All right. We got six in the chat. God Usopp in the chat. Hazy Saki. Kevin Salinas. Khalil McCollum. Ankraith. Jack Wilbur. Triz. Tariq. Uh, Oz Phenom, uh, Is... I can't see Kayleen KJ Aaron Tate and always laughing all in the chat what's up y'all hey, hey all of you guys much love to you and yours and happy Valentine's Day cause you are our Valentine's no <laughs> All right, my bad. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, Lawrence. <laughs> I completely forgot. All right, apologies. <laughs> Valentine's Day doesn't exist. <laughs> hey, we got a donation from Uncraft Justice. I hope you guys like that new uh, thing that pops up. Marv, you might have to make that a l tiny bit louder. Yeah, 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 we can barely hear it. All right, uh, thank you for joining us as always. This is episode 35. We're going to be going off of One Piece chapter 1040. Uh, before we get into the actual chapter, I just want to say... My name is Larry. <laughs> Large. <laughs> and this is that One Piece talk. Where we talk One Piece. One Piece. Yo, I really be forgetting. <laughs> Come on, man. I think these episodes we haven't done it. Onion, I ain't forget you, man. I'm just still beefing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Layers. So we have a couple announcements. It's going to be really quick. This chapter was super beefy, and, like, we got to get through it. So in order to hit calls later. And we're four minutes in. All right. So let's go. We have five episodes over 500 plus views for the first time ever. This is exciting. We want to say thank you. Thank you. Right on, right on. So also, on. <laughs> uh, we know that you guys want the show to be longer and we're close to those goals. The only way to make this show longer is to support us. So the best way to do that is to watch listen to our videos, or if you're on Spotify, just the audio, liking, sharing, commenting, and also donating if you're able to. If you don't, don't worry about it. Uh, we have created a way where you can subscribe to us monthly and every dollar will go to the show. We ultimately want to make this show longer, especially for chapters like this, uh, but it takes moolah. So if you like, go down into the description of this video below and hit the link that's labeled support us. To those that have already subscribed to that, Cuddy, Flum, Leboon, Doughboy64, Javers, Nick Quavo, Afinam, Rono, Chris, and Trogdor Killer, thank you a whole lot for supporting us. That money is going to be going to the show. Um, to those that had donated last stream via Super Chat, Matt, Hazy, Sake, Five, Trickzilla, Onion Baby, Chris, uh, Michael, Nathy, uh, Akaoni, Rictor, and Empirical Purity. Thank you so much! <laughs> <laughs> we really do appreciate it. And you know what's crazy, guys? I don't want to be like, 
the one to like stunt real, real quick, but Marv doesn't have another show like us. <laughs> so I just want to say thank you for hey. making us even more special than we already thought we were because we are special, uh, especially Lawrence Aww. in a lot of ways. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I just, just want to say thank y'all. Special shout out to all y'all who voted no in the chat on the poll. For those of y'all that say yes, I know who you is. I know who you is. Um, I don't know. Is Empirical Purity here? Uh, not yet. I do not see them. All right. So we do have an announcement. It's a special announcement. Um, it's going to be our final announcement, and we hope to have many more like this. When starting to grow a channel... We wanted to be able to grow our community as well. We want a certain type of professionalism, but also a certain positive and supportive vibe to be present always. We felt after talking it over amongst each other that we would like to nominate our first moderator for our YouTube channel. That person is... Empirical Purity! <laughs> He's not in the chat, or she's not in the chat right now, but uh, we hope that this is something you'll accept. Based on how interactive you've been, how helpful you are with others that visit the channel that are new, and how amazing you are to us, we thought this was basically a no-brainer. Uh, we hope you continue to do just that and others uh, follow your example. We're counting on you. To those that want to be a moderator as well, please follow Empirical Purity as an example. We're looking for more. But anyway, let's get into the chapter. But before we do chapters, <laughs> uh, we missed a question from Empirical Purity last episode, and we want to make sure his Super Chat donation doesn't go unnoticed. We want everything that comes to us to be well thought and then come back to you. Uh, you know, it goes both ways. Um, he asked us, does Luffy need to awaken or need gear five to gear five fifth to defeat Kaido. You wanna go first? Oh you go first. Um I don't think he needs to awaken personally. Uh, and I also probably wouldn't like it. I do think gear fifth needs to come or at least another gear fourth form. Because mm. I think even with advanced conquerors hockey and bound man or snake man or tank man, whatever like he whips out, will not be enough pop to put Kaido down. So I think gear fifth needs to come. Or at least another gear fourth form that allows him even more strength than what he has now in conjunction with uh, Advanced Conquerors and Rio. So, personally, I don't think Awakening is necessary. Mm -hmm. I think it would just be a lot to do that. Like, that would be like, what was that, three or four power-ups in one arc for Luffy? That's a lot. I mean, that's, yeah. that's even me saying that because I'm, I'm all about the power-ups. That's a lot. Um, I just think that's too much to put into one character for one time. I fully subscribe to the Gear 5th. I need it. Uh, but, yeah, I can go. Uh, Lawrence? Um, in all honesty, it would make sense for him to need it. Not, I don't say that he should have it, because I feel like Oda should have that for another arc, because this one was heavily hockey and especially Conqueror's based. Even though we still had, we still had, uh, for example, Low and Kid, uh, Shester Awakening abilities, like introducing that into the show uh, during the Wano arc. But Luffy's showing the his main focus was his hockey in Conquerors. So, well, he does need it because he's fighting a monster powerhouse like Kaido, and Luffy's not there yet. He needs to keep growing. So, strength wise, I can see why he could need Awakening, but I agree with Sebastian as in saying Oda should technically Oda should save the Awakening for another arc, maybe even next one. Uh, uh, but right now, there's many speculations about Luffy getting um, showing another aspect of his gear fourth. Like so you sent me that Tiger Man, mm -hmm. you know. To me, I hope in the gear fifth. I hope uh, the next uh, for looks Luffy in gear. If he does have another gear fourth like Tiger Man, I hope that's separate from gear fifth. Yeah. I hope it's another form. I'm hoping gear fifth would be more of all you know the gears together, being Luffy's final gear. I guess in a way. I mean, it could be more, but. I like to see a well-rounded Luffy with all the gears in one, boosting his power, his speed, to try to catch up to the overwhelming strength that is Kaido. So I think that's what's needed with Luffy to show that, because right now he definitely needs... He, the power he has now is not enough to stop Kaido or put him down. So he needs to overwhelm Kaido with tremendous power, even though all the stuff she's landing is still not enough. So he needs to heavily increase his power now. All right. For me, I, I would go the Awakening route. 
And I think the Awakening route will include Gear 5. And mm. I think, like I've said, the Yonko are supposed to be these super powerhouses that have reigned for years. And you're not supposed to just catch up in two weeks or three months or even two years. You're, you're supposed to find these people unbeatable. So Luffy just learning something during this fight is the same problem I said Katakuri was facing, where, like, he just saw Luffy, Luffy learned something, and then got beat, which is, like, kind of unfair, and it speaks more to plot. So if I'm going to look at, like, Kaido, and he's supposed to be the baddest person in the show right now, then Luffy shouldn't be able to surmount him with something he's going to just learn. I think he needs everything at his disposal. So I would say... The Awakening will lead to Gear 5, but he will need both in order to beat Kaido still. Because Kaido is just that guy. But that's about it. That makes sense because, in a way, uh, Kid and Law couldn't beat Big Mom without their Awakening. Yeah. You know? But I do, I will say one thing. I do hope it, it may lead to it, but I hope Gear 5th and Awakening are separate. Even if it leads to his Awakening, it's mm -hmm. fine. But I hope Luffy's Gear 5th, if he has one, is different, different from his Awakening. I second that. Yeah. Um, we do have another question. It, it came from our Gmail, and I wanted to, I promised this person I would ask this question before we got to the chapter, but it's our first Jamaican, uh, Jamaican fan, hey, and uh, <laughs> his name is Jahim. So he says, so I know you don't think so highly of Kid. I know, right? <laughs> but do you think if Kid was trained by Rayleigh, like Luffy, he would be much stronger? I do believe Law's ability is easier to use compared to Kid's because Kid's Devil Fruit depends on the amount of metal objects within the area. All Law has to do is say Kroom. I'm not saying Kid over Law, but Law does have it easier. Hmm. So the question is, if he was trained by Rayleigh, would he be astronomically stronger? Yes. Yeah. I mean, 100%. He'd have a more refined... Hockey usage, he'd have mm -hmm. more response. Even even his devil fruit usage, like Rayleigh, even though he's not a devil fruit user, Luffy came back more like potent with how he used his ability, mm -hmm. just from how he was sending back cannons in uh, Gear Three. You know what I'm saying? Like he straight up was a better all around fighter. It wasn't just hockey. Mm. He learned the basics. Yes. Now whether or not Kid can learn and is willing to learn in the way that Luffy was. That remains to be seen because Kid's kind of an a-hole. Mm -hmm. So, like, I don't even think he would just respect Rayleigh in that way. Also, Kid has to be worthy of Rayleigh's, like, mentorship the way that Luffy was, and he's just not. So it's it's like a double-edged thing here where, like, I just don't think it's a great match. In general, yes, he would just be much stronger. I just personally don't think character for character Kid's going to sit and listen to Rayleigh and that Rayleigh is going to take the time to train kid so if in a perfect world they were able to link up and it worked out kid would be crazy right now you know what i'm saying but i just if we're going based off who these characters are i don't think it's a good fit at all as far as training what so. about you law um i guess sebastian a kid would definitely be better but the whole thing is like uh because even when they're breaking down the supernovas Rayleigh and his wife and Rayleigh's wife shaki both said they liked luffy over kid mm -hmm. because kid seemed more Kind of like uh, Luffy seemed more like a free spirit where Kid was more malicious or evil in a way. Not that he is evil, but he's hurting and killing Marines or yeah. attacking civilians. He doesn't care about that, you know. But he would be stronger because, like Sebastian said also as well, really if he's smart and he's clever. So just so he did with Luffy, he could show, I believe, even I think it will be more transferable action Kid situation mm -hmm. where uh, Rayleigh could give Kid or show him a new way. Or give them the idea of a new way of how to use your ability. Instead of what you've been showing, you could use it, your ability this way. It's magnesium. You could use it this way. Magnesium? <laughs> Mag magnetism. Magnetism. Magnesium. Mag magnetism, right? Uh, Larry, oh, are you so? My bad. Yeah. So pretty much uh, magnetism. And so, but like the, the hockey growth is definitely what Kid is lacking now. And that would be, that would definitely show more for um, Kid because also to um, how he used it. And putting that more in his ability would make Kid Excellently stronger yeah. with all that. So, like, he would grow a lot. Probably even rival Luffy his strength now if he had that training. We're going to stop you there. <laughs> Probably. We're going to stop you there. There's a possibility. Now, hold on, hold on. We're not going to drag too much because we got to do the chapter. Uh -huh. I want to say Jaheim is in the uh, the chat. He says, what's up? And thank you for asking the question. So. Hey, man. You are, I, listen, man. I gave you my word. I follow that. Um, I'm going to be real with you, bro. He, he's, a, he's a very dense person. 
And we've known that. And the reason why Luffy has gotten to where he's gotten is because Luffy is a genius at fighting. Mm-hmm. Kid isn't. Yeah. It's the reason why an ability an ability like the Gomu Gomu can be stretched, mm-hmm. <laughs> pun intended, as far <laughs> as it has compared to Kid's OP ability. Now, go back to Sebastian. Is he willing to learn? Is he willing to accept Rayleigh's advice? And to me, he would be willing to to a certain degree, but it would only take him so far because if that was true, then Luffy would be, you know... L- Luffy would be like the the man of all time at this point, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I just can't see Kid being like, you know what? Like he's right. I gotta use my ability to do something different. But he's not gonna think of like in terms of Gear Four possibilities. He's just gonna be like, yo, let me collect more trash. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, let's get to the story. Let's yeah. get to the chapter. So One Piece chapter 1040. Is uh, released officially. Uh, we do not read it illegally. And <laughs> uh, during the cover cover story, we have Niji and Yonji still trapped within Mont Dior's book. They are remembering their altercation with Big Mom. Since Yonji took a punch from Big Mom and is still alive, <laughs> does that mean the Germa brothers are at least kids level? <laughs> And we can answer this quickly. Uh, no. Oh, no? Okay. <laughs> Listen, still a lot. They were defeated. Yeah. Kid was still fighting. Yeah. They they lost in this in this little scenario right here. I know you just love people who get punched, bro, so I, do. I had to ask. I was Big Mom, too, for that matter. <laughs> uh, Law? <laughs> so the thing is, is Kid, I mean, the uh, Sanji's brother is the same strength as Kid. Is that the question? Yeah. Um, it's a trolling question. It is a trolling question. <laughs> it is a trolling question. Um, I would have to give um, Kid a little more, but I don't believe Let's that. Let's go! <laughs> Law fell for it. <laughs> what? Yeah, their kid's a little stronger, I guess, huh? Yeah, it's I mean. It's crazy, yo. Kid would we body haven't seen, we haven't ahead, seen Sanji's yeah. brothers go all out. Do you think Kid would body them? Do you think Kid would body? Aren't they made of metal? Like, he would, like aren't they like So would he body, body Sanji? Maybe. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Anyway, <laughs> I'm glad. My opinion <laughs> is that they're probably like the same level. Oh, my God. <laughs> Go to the chapter, bro. <laughs> Go to the chapter. Uh, all right. So, long kids' attacks weren't enough. That's the topic. Uh, we go right back into the fight with Big Mom. Law and Kid both did their ultimate attacks, and Big Mom just laughed it off. She's currently gripping the ground to keep Kid from pushing her down. Then she says, before she deflects Kid's attack back at them, if they would like to give her 50 years of their (laughs) life or serve her instead. She announces, life or slavery? (laughs) Law and Kid, don't waver. Uh, Were you disappointed that Kid wasn't able to put her down when Law set him up for the alley-oop? And we'll start with Law. I was actually gonna look at Sebastian for this because all that stuff he was popping the other day, <laughs> right last week. <laughs> she's still taking kids' attack while talking awesome. this trash, bruh. Gripping on, she's back to be fighting through it. Like, you know what I'm saying? That impressed me because she's legit holding on in the midst of talking, like, you know what? I'm gonna give y'all a choice after, I'm gonna, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, it's like the most gangster <laughs> thing just, ever. Exactly. <laughs> like, taking taking kids, like, to me, it's like Sebastian, like, yo, this kid's attack possibly ended her. And I was thinking of what Sebastian said earlier, too. Yo, he was so hyped. About um, the HP. <laughs> about the on. HP, remember? If she's at 20, then Law probably took her down to 10. Kids was 10 and plus that. Nah, son. She out here. Both of y'all about to get clapped up. Like, <laughs> that's, your voice. that's your boy? That's your boy, your word. Oh, y'all yeah, right here? Y'all yeah, all get clapped up with him. So like, she's legit. Is not, I'm not going to say fully eating, right? Because I can't say that. No, she she's, not, she, yeah. she's not yeah. fully eating. Yeah, she took the damage, but she's able. She's fighting through, like, kids attack while it's hitting her, right? And to me, I didn't see her really doing that with Law. Yeah, she was punching Law, but that's before Law landed the finishing, you know, Joe and his attack. He was still in the process of his attack. He kids at full range hitting it. She's just like, because <clears throat> I, I was even thinking too. What she could also do just let go of one arm and just swing to the side. You know, climb bro, up. Bro, she said she was gonna deflect like, it back. back to them. So this whole finishing move from kid, I'm sorry, it's not enough. As I've been saying, yo, he ain't got a laser gun. He got a rail he gun. It. It's different. <laughs> yo, the way she's she's mad gangsta. I'm sorry. Right, are y'all done? Right. Are y'all done? We're, We're you done. Sad. Oh, yeah, no. go anyway, ahead, go ahead. I will say, 
I was disappointed in Kansas. State. <laughs> I, I will say that. But Big Mom still didn't deflect it. Like saying that I'm going to deflect it and actually deflecting the attack are two very, very different things. Mm-hmm. This this attack that kid did, he did have to double down on it later, ended up pushing her off the island. And she was incapable of countering it. Whether y'all want to create scenarios of her swimming one way or whatever, she actively didn't do that and With couldn't who's do it. With whose help? Listen, law help, all yeah, law help. That's the fight. But what I'm saying is if she could deflect it, she should have just deflected it. You know what I'm saying? Like, why are we talking about doing something? Well, you're, just do that you're, thing. You're forgetting again. I don't think she could deflect it. People talk crap all the time okay, when they're no. taking damage that's from true. people. That happens in <laughs> One Piece that's all true. the time. But remember, but she, it's a Yonko. Yeah, it's a Yonko. It's a weakened Yonko. And most, yeah. But remember, the tax she just took before that was loss, right? And then when she's talking about reflecting it, as soon as she starts saying that, who rose up? Law. Then rooms her. So he kind of nullified all her Hold means on, of no, doing No, no, no. He roomed her to, to we'll get to that later, her. to silence yeah, her. He didn't yeah, yeah. impact her capabilities other than hold on, hold on. her getting to hold the on. homies. All I'm saying, the question is, were, were you disappointed yes. with Kid? I said yes. <laughs> all, right. all right. I was disappointed. Yes. Okay. Okay. I was. He said yes. Yeah. Honestly, I was too. But I wasn't disappointed at the fact that, like, he didn't really put her down. I was disappointed in the fact that, like, all the hype that I was hearing about, right? Uh-huh. And people were like, yo, that's his final attack. They're gonna, <laughs> he's going to take her out. Like, I was just like, no. Like, that's not happening. Like, I already knew before he did it, it mm-hmm. wasn't going to take her out because I knew before they even fight, he needed stuff like this to compete. Mm-hmm. So if he needs that and he's not doing it, yeah. this is the first time he's kind of damaging her, in my opinion. So he needed to do this the whole entire fight. He needed something more than this. Yeah. Actually. He didn't need this real yeah. gun. He needed something more. So I immediately knew that I wasn't taking yeah. out Big this Mom. This just put him on the field where I could actually do exactly. something. It was like, yo, yeah, I can now sure. compete with Law and yeah. do Law damaging attacks. Right. But not a finisher, yeah. But not, not a finisher. finisher. What are we talking about? Yeah. I mean, the fight did end. All right, <laughs> we're gonna get we're gonna get to that. Ring outs attack. count. Not not from, <laughs> nah, bro. Listen, you was nightmare, the, but it was Soul Calibur, but even, and you used to ring people out all the time, and they were W's, right? But Listen. even even it's from uh, uh, um, the fight did end. It's not from Kids Attack. Yes, it is. No, it's not. No, yes, it it's is. not. What do you mean? No, we, we no, can keep not. reading. Hold on, yeah. hold on. <laughs> it's it's not from Law, and it's not from Kid. Yo, it's she, from both she, of them. Without she, both of them doing what they did, they, she wouldn't be forced they, down and the bombs wouldn't have fell on her. They ringed her out, of course, but ultimately, Kid didn't even push her off the island. Kid pushed her through the floor and then the bomb exploded and then that pushed her off the island. Like, it destroyed the whole bottom of the whole island on the right side. So it wasn't even Kid who I... actually pushed her through Onigashima. So his attack wasn't that great. <laughs> uh, no. I disagree. No. She was falling through Bro. Onigashima anyway. She grabbed the bomb to not fall further down, okay. and it but, messed her up more. Okay. So, but, you, know, you know what I'm saying? But the thing is, she was able to grab something else and direct herself in another direction. And she just happened to grab she a bomb. She was still falling down, bro. Yeah, but honestly, if you're clo- if you fo- if Mufasa's clawing at the gra- at the wall here and still falling to the trans- the the stampede, like he's still falling, bro. It's still moving in one direction. So you just change the trajectory no, of the fall. I'm gonna tell you right it's, now, it's a Yonko. Yo, I'm gonna tell you this right Mufasa now. Was no, Mufasa. you guys are also forgetting the last explosion. I don't know if we're gonna get to that. Is that no, yet? we're gonna get to okay, everything. All right. So I, let me let me ask the next question because there are a couple questions. Um, so we're all disappointed. Yes, yes. we were all, all right, disappointed. Alright, one of ten, how disappointed are you? <laughs> Probably five. Five? Yeah. That's a week. It wasn't, how it about you, Law? It wasn't like a seven. Mine is a ten. <laughs> ten? Ten. I'm surprised Easy. it's that high for you, considering nah, you had a low bar of threshold for listen, impress in the first listen, place. He gets this type of disrespect, <laughs> he and he deserves it. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. So next we see Law use his ability to cancel out all the sound Big Mom influences. He recalls back to his savior, Corazon. <clears throat> Kid powers up his damn punk, and Law cuts Big Mom's misery homie in half. Kid finally pushes her down the hole, and Big Mom falls to where Yamato and Kazembo are. She tries to grab onto something, but grabs onto a bomb. It explodes, creating a bigger hole and blasting her out of Onigashima. She falls 
uh, ends up taking Kazembo with her accidentally. On her way down, she either remembers or is having an inside conversation with herself with Roger. She asks him if some of the One Piece is in Wano 2. Then she states this defeat is not enough to kill her, making Law and Kid the victors. What are your thoughts on the conclusion of this fight and what Big Mom mentioned about One Piece? And start with you, Seb. Um, so we did mention, so a while back we had said that the bombs would play a factor. We just, I called it in a different way. I thought Kid would actually attach them to her. But I did always think the bombs would play a factor in how they defeated Big Mom because I just didn't see how they had enough physical pop to take her out. Um, the Oni Gashima flying and her falling and all that playing into it. Like, I, I liked that. I also like that it didn't, like, you always talk, you always talk about how, like, Big Mom is this and Big Mom is that, and I always downgrade play her. And, like, chapters like this show, like, even if they did get the upper hand on her, like, she's such a beast that they still couldn't put her out. You know what I mean? And, like, either that's their weakness or just in general they're that she's that strong. So, like, I like that. I loved her talking about Roger because we don't hear about Roger enough to me. For him to be such a, like, central focus of what everyone's striving towards, we don't get Roger insight almost ever. So Big Mom, somebody who's known Roger for years, talking about him in this moment where she's like, yo, I had to deal with like this era that you created, now I'm dealing with the brats that came up or trying to get your thing. Like, you didn't think about us. You didn't even tell us what it is. Like, we're we're in the dark too. Hey, onion. <laughs> Shout hey. out to onion. We'll, we'll after. <laughs> Shout out to onion. Um, it's probably some hate, but whatever. Uh, in general, I really like that. I, I like this chapter a lot. Um, Law doing that extra ability. Like, there was so much in this chapter, man. Like. He can silence people? Like, why can he do that? The end ending of the chapter with the bomb landing. I told you that wasn't Brooke in the damn thing. Yo, can we relax? Like, you we said didn't get the to those parts. No, I didn't. I said the fight. The and chapter ended about with the fight. What, one, no, the chapter oh. didn't end. Yes, it did. No, it didn't. There's yes, like, it did. There's like three other pages after this, bro. Yeah. It's like one page. Anyway. Whatever. Either way, what I said happened in the middle of that. So you think anyway. I just asked three questions and then the show's over? It don't matter. Anyway. <laughs> like, anyway. What's wrong with you? I thought it was really dope that <clears throat> she was silenced and it exploded on top of her with the silence. I thought I liked all of that. Palms to Corazon. And I guess I'll save the rest of my thoughts for later. But I did like it. I did. Because I, I bashed Big Mama a lot. And she, in defeat, still showed out. And yeah. that's dope. That's dope. Yeah. What about you, Law? What do you uh you want me to ask the question again? Yeah. Please. What are your thoughts on the conclusion of this fight and what Big Mom mentioned about One Piece? Well, the the Chris fight was awesome. Like you said, uh, it shows the, how much you need to take out of Yonko. Like uh it's just it sh to me it's like going back like uh, cuz we'll, if it was just uh Kid and Law doing that thing, well we have been satisfied the way Big Mom taken out. Yeah. Cuz even her she's like you think this could kill me. You know, so showing now uh, how much of a tank Big Mom really is. How much damage she's taking, she's still like uh, keeping out. No, this can't kill me. You know. Yeah. And her mentioning like Roger is is like special. We definitely do not get Roger mentioned. We all want to see more Roger. In fact, hear him mentioned and see more of him. We get very very little, and maybe just Oda in a way teasing us because Oda himself is a troll. Like pretty much, I don't know what he plans on doing with revealing more about Roger later on. If he does or not, hopefully he does, because we want to expect how did Roger get so strong, and what we because we still have no idea what even a little bit what One Piece is. Maybe it is gold, but it is different. Something uh, about it. So understanding and how Roger's influence influenced uh, this great power era, and acknowledging that we're gonna have to deal with all of this, mm -hmm. kind of shows that her and Roger had a conversation, you know, and how much they they are actually trying to become pirate king themselves. You know, because like Wiper kind of showed that he didn't really care about it. So then he's like, all right, the other Yonkos, this, we're just pirates, you know. Mm. But so it's like, but then showing here is like they're actually active for that. They want that title of Pirate King. Like mm -hmm. the, even the talking Roger, tell us where it is, you know, before you die, like give us a hit, you know. So pretty much that's different. But also I want to add, where are you guys getting that, uh, that she took um, Zimbo with her and the bombs with her? Kazembo? Yeah. Because when you see her falling, right? Kazembo starts going down with her. Like, you can see it a little bit. And uh, then uh, there's, like, little bombs that yeah, are falling with if her. If you see, this is a bomb right here. 
Oh, okay. That's a bomb. It's not the big bombs yeah. that are frozen by Yamato. I mean, we okay, didn't yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. That, yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's an armory. There were yeah. other bombs and stuff okay. in that room. Okay, that so. makes sense. Because I'm trying to figure out the explosion. I wanted to ask, do you guys think it had something to do with Law's no. uh, thing? Because she's still in that bubble this entire time. Well, the bubble is just to silence whatever she influences. That's it. Mm-hmm. So but it just, doesn't add any extra damage. You sure? Positive. Because of... Unless the, unless the bombs are naming their own attacks, <laughs> then no. Hey, man, Konzumbo changed the game. You feel me? No, because just, just, um, I'm just thinking about effects that Law could do a lot with his room. Because tr- obviously he had to trap something. Because what's the purpose of the room? I thought it was just silence because he had to trap something inside there. He just silenced her, so uh, Misery couldn't save her. Okay. So Hera and Prometheus couldn't save her. They needed her to fall off the island. Yeah, yeah that's true. I knew that. Because I know, because I'm thinking, it, I'm thinking besides cutting, you know, uh, Hera that mm-hmm. Law did, uh, did he do something to Big Mom as well? Nah, he just silenced her, bro. Okay. That's it? Uh, yeah, I was going to say that pretty much. Uh, uh, um, The way I felt about this fight was very interesting. In a way, like I discussed last night when we were watching the Super Bowl to Lionel, I feel like Big Mom was nerfed and she was unnerfed. At the same simultaneously, mm-hmm. and what I mean by that is like when we went to Whole Cake Island, the biggest thing that Sebastian considered her not being the best Yonko was because of her personality and her hunger pains. And it's like, to a degree, all of Whole Cake Island, she was affected by those two things, so it made her seem weaker than she actually was, which is like why they escaped and all this, this, and that, right? And she didn't have that this fight. But what what was nerfed about that's that's the nerf during this fight that she didn't have those things. What was nerfed about her was the fact that she wasn't utilizing hockey at any point during the fight, except for when she was like punching uh, Law. And it, it was and we might have seen her use Conqueror's hockey right in this chapter when she uses her Soul Pocus ability to snatch souls away from the uh, the the Zo. Pirates and then, mm-hmm. you know, beast pirates as well. Yeah. There was black lightning there. Yeah, there was. So I think she's using it. I did. I thought that as well. So yeah. I'm not too sure. But the fact is, like, that was nerfed for her. And I feel like, what is Oda trying to say to us during this fight? What What is the message? And the message we kind of were always talking about during this fight was devil fruits. Like, do devil fruits still matter? Because hockey is so prevalent. Like, we're seeing... You know, Luffy learned this specific hockey and he's competing with a Yonko evenly mm-hmm. in base form. And it's like, oh, so that's the way you become top tier. And Otis kind of saying, well, Devil Fruits still matter. Yeah. Like, there's still a power system out there that can topple even these great opponents. Mm-hmm. And it comes in terms with like broken abilities like Law, where he's not using hockey at all. A kid who's supposed to have hockey, which I think he's nerfed now in this, you know, fight. He's not using it at all either. So this is a this is a fight purely based on devil fruits. And I didn't I feel like even though this fight was the best fight in Wano so far, it's super enjoyable. It gave us everything we wanted out of Big Mom, but I already expected this type of feeling from Big Mom. You know what I'm saying? I expected these type of fights with these Yonkos would go this way. But I'm not too comfortable with the fact that like hockey is not being utilized. And it's taking a back seat to show Devil Fruits are still in contention to be to make you that guy. Mm-hmm. And I didn't like that too much. Mm-hmm. So it, I love Big Mom, man. I've always said she could be the best Yonko if she if she really had she has all the requirements to be that. Like she has the ambition. She has all this, you know, she's super scary. Like her power is insane. It's probably up there with laws because she could heal herself and you know, it's it's like she has so much. And for me to think that these two guys have overpowered her, it, I was so happy that when Oda made her fall to the ground, she said the exact words, do not think that this is going to kill me. Yeah. Yeah. It just shows, like, her willpower is insane, mm-hmm. but it's not consistent with her fighting abilities. Mm-hmm. So now it's causing me to question, can she utilize hockey? Mm-hmm. The way she's supposed to, or does it just come off an emotional basis? So I'll I'll say this: in Big Mom's fighting style in general, she was very Devil Fruit focused, mm-hmm. whereas Kaido and probably Shanks and others have like 
leaned more heavily towards the hockey in their fighting styles in general. So I feel like, to me, if you're going to do, a, if you want to have a fight where you want to highlight that devil fruits still matter, to your point, Big Mom was the perfect person to do that with if you want it to be at this level. But this is where, you know I, I, mean? this is where I say, like, this is where Oda probably made the mistake with Kid. Mm-hmm. Because Kid has the requirements to compete with her on a hockey level to a degree. Not even terms, but to a degree where, like, Law could land his shots with his devil fruit, and Kid could land those devastating blows to keep her on her toes. Because that would have made Kid seem more comparable to Law to some degree. Because right now we don't think so. We're like, yo, if Kid is a 92, then Law is like a 97. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that the numbers that they are. I'm just saying that's the difference between the two at this point. And it's like it wouldn't have seemed like Law carried the fight as much. And I think that's the mistake in this fight. It was the hockey utilization just not being there for Kid, but also not being there for Big Mom. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to question my Yonkos. Like, I don't want to question, like, yo, can you use hockey? Like, mm-hmm. no, I'm not supposed to question you. Mm-hmm. You've been on, you have numerous amounts of evidence to support that you have this. Mm-hmm. And, but you're not using it yeah. against these two, but you use it against page one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, come on, bro. And that's another like, thing. Kid is more dangerous than page mm-hmm. one. Yeah. Law is more dangerous than page one. Like, they should anger you if they're trying to take you out. Mm-hmm. Crazy. <clears throat> the uh, one point I, <clears throat> I want to bring out that me and Lon have been noticing here, and this actually goes back into, it plays on to more, but this is like an example. What Ray Leaf said. Remember he said that there's, obviously, there's three types of hockey, right? But he said that somebody usually favors one, mm-hmm. right? But now let's go outside of hockey. That goes with abilities as well. So you could have hockey, and you could have an ability, but... People kind of go into what they favor. I get what you're saying. Yeah. But the fact is we've seen her display them. Yes. Yeah. And the fact that she didn't use them mm-hmm. is the issue. So, yeah. And this this is a bigger issue is that we don't know that she didn't. It's that the fight was so off panel for her getting hers off that she may have. And that's a bigger knock to me that if I have to leave it up to my imagination that she did that. Oda should have just showed on panel her using these things and them reacting and getting hit it's with true. it. It's true. Versus now I have to be like, she may have used that it's, off panel. It's super true what and you're saying. And that's not, you know, but, I, my bad, I cut you But off. the thing is, too, it's like, even in the situations that, that you're supposed to require that type of hockey, she didn't use it. She just did. If we assume that that Black Lightning, is, that's but, her in that moment. Yeah, yeah, but she was, she was actually stealing souls in that moment. She wasn't yeah. actually yeah, defending so, herself. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Well, we, I mean, yeah, that's still. That um, hold on, let me let me finish yeah, my yeah, points. Yeah, All right, so I'm I'm very happy with the fight. I love it like everybody else does. I thought it was a very excellent call back to Tame Te Tame Te Kabako, Tame Te Kabako, the box yeah. where we first. You know, she got the, you know, Luffy sent the bomb to her, yeah, and yeah, it yeah. didn't explode, yeah, and now yeah. she's dying yeah, by a bomb. Yeah, bomb. I thought that was a good or, callback. Mm-hmm. I love the cortisone paying homage with Law, and it just makes me feel like Law could copy the Goro Gora ability. He could <laughs> copy Cortisone's ability. He could do anything he wishes. He could do soul pocus if he wanted to into this. He literally can. He He's the best devil fruit by far, y'all and see it's not why, close. Y'all see why I need him to die, right? <laughs> he's, y'all he's, see it. he's the strongest. Devil Fruit user. I know they said, you know, Whitebeard's ability is the best in the verse, paramecia yeah. wise, but if Kid literally could just wrap the whole world in this ability and do whatever he wants, thank you. Game's world over. Room. Girl, yeah. world the game, room. And at this point, I'm thinking he could probably do it in the next like 10, 20 years. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> He's not making it that far. Hopefully. So, for, for example, for the big mom talk where she was talking to Roger, I was confused because it seemed like she was talking to Roger, but at the same time, it seems like a conversation they had previously and she was just talking the words that she said Mm -hmm. because she said but you're dying yeah i'm not i'm too confused on that Mm -hmm. but anyway that's my thoughts on it man i thought it was excellent um sorry to cut you to lawrence we just run out of time and i had a lot to say i apologize all right so brooke isn't the figure of death told you i was wrong told you i was wrong (laughs) i didn't think that either uh i was wrong i admit it Zoro is bloody, and he apparently fell off of Onigashima. <laughs> he died. Nah, he, imagine he just splat. Yeah, <laughs> like what's going on with that? Nah, I think it's just shifting because of the bomb exploding, and he just like leaning, like he's just laying. No, he fell through the rocks though. The rocks is falling. He's falling with it. Yeah. 
Did we get confirmation of that? Bro, you can oh, see Oh, wow. How did I miss that? Yeah. I read this chapter like four times and I missed that every Imagine time. Imagine he fold with Big Mom and just survives. Rip. It. <laughs> <laughs> survives. Uh, it. Orochi isn't dead. Uh, so happy about that. He's with Hiori. He already put on that mask. Um, Rizo wins after like 18 <laughs> chapters. <laughs> Jeez, it's the longest fight in like Wano. Yeah, those samurai wills, man. All right, so for the final question before we start taking calls, because I do want to hear from you guys. Um, we see Momonosuke do the whole Big Mom fell through. Momo sees Yamato, and they speak. Momo mentions that Zunesha is coming, and Yamato replies, what? The one from Odin's journal? He then says, indeed, a companion of Joy Boy who committed a crime 800 years ago. What are your thoughts about this new revelation regarding Zunesha and Joy Boy? It's on me. Uh, Lawrence. Yeah. Because I think you went last. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Well, we, we already knew that she, uh, Zunisha, committed a crime 800 years ago, though. Yeah, yeah he spoke that. to Momonosuke and told Momonosuke about yeah, it. We yeah, we sure knew that. So I guess the, the added information is the fact that it was, she was Joy Boy's companion. Yeah. Right, so that's the new information. Yeah. Okay. So, but I think that goes, plays into, like, because Joy, Joy Boy did something in the past, right? Uh, I'm not saying he was messing up, because didn't he apologize to some, the uh, Fisherman Joy Boy Island? apologized on the Pony Glyph. Yeah, uh, and in Fisherman Island. Island. Yeah. yeah. So pretty much, he probably, honestly, just think about like how it goes in One Piece. He's probably, uh, not in a bad way, but like more like how Luffy, Gold Roger, and Zola are. They're like, they start something, or they end up in the middle of something, right? So there, there probably was a big situation, a war or whatever, that, result, that resulted of Joy Boy doing something. And he probably involved a bunch of different, it probably escalated, and involving Unisa. Maybe he talked to animals, he was very animal friendly, you know? And or that was his, it could have been like his pet or something that with Zunisha in the past. But Joy Boy, pretty much uh, being Zunisha's commander is interesting because I guess uh, I'm trying to just think, because you already know he already had the ability to speak to, uh, you know, communicate with um, the voice of all things, communicate with animals and everything, right? So the com- we got to figure out what that crime is that, because the why they said is just this animal. But it also doesn't make sense to me. If it was a crime that committed uh, 800 years ago, right, and they would send us to this, why was the world government believing that it disappeared or, like, it was gone? Like, wouldn't they know about the crime and what the state, the punishment for Zunisha? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, when I read it, I was just like, okay, that's dope. I didn't think too deep into it because I, I was like, we have so vague information about this and about Zunisha and about Joy Boy. But I thought it was cool, like, when you get two Lord, like, Lord dumpable people connected, and it creates a bigger Lord dump that you're going to get. You know what I mean? Like, it's now, now we know that Zunisha is directly tied to Joy Boy. When before it was, okay, this is a Kozuki thing, specifically. Now it's a straight up ancient kingdom, Zuni, like Zunisha Joy Boy kind of thing, mm-hmm. which, you know, there's theories going around that she's the ancient weapon of Pluton and stuff, which is cool. I like that one, but like, with this, the, the biggest thing to me was um, some translation said Nakama, and it was like, to me, that just sparks pirate crew. Mm. So, like, was this a actual crewmate of Joy Boy? If Joy Boy is a captain of a crew, was this a crewmate of his, for real, versus, like, they're just friends? Like, you know, like, is this, like, the Frankie of his crew type mm. thing? So, like, I don't know. I was intrigued by that. Uh, I think it's dope because they ha- even they have the information and they still don't know for real. I feel like like they they knew who it was and what that represents, but they don't know why it's a companion because I don't think Odin knew. Maybe he did. We'll see. But I thought that was cool. I thought I thought of a pirate crew specifically, and it, maybe Zunisha's the ship. Yeah. So. Uh, for my thoughts, you know, I wrote a couple notes down just because it made me think like who Joy Boy is. And some weird thought came to my head that I remembered from when we were on Fishman Island. And I look back, and I feel like Oda Hime, Shirohoshi's mom, Neptune's wife from Fishman Island, I feel like she's, she, she kind of was doing things that Neptune meant. Because I look back, meant, Neptune said that Oda Hime was doing something that the forebearers of their uh, ancestry had done. Mm-hmm. So basically, like, sh- what she was trying to do is what they were trying to do 800 years ago. 
And I'm like, okay, so that's probably during Zo, uh, Zunisha, and Joy Boy's era. And I'm like, yo, like, like, if, and then there was like a silhouette of Orahime talking. Um, let me see if I can find it. It's chapter 626, <laughs> page 10. Yeah. She goes, along with that special mermaid will come one with, one who can guide her to use her power for good. And then when that time comes, the world will change. That's what the legend says. In that silhouette, it kind of looks like Shanks. But it looks like that. Luffy a little bit, too. Because mm-hmm. I was thinking to myself, is Joy Boy Luffy or is it Momonosuke? Like, because I remember people saying Joy Boy could be Momonosuke. Like, Oda might be just playing it off and being like, no, nah, it's not Luffy. It's actually Momo. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it's Momo. I really think that maybe, just maybe, Zo survived on Zunisha's back for 800 years, right? And the Kazuki clan was also prevalent. The Kazuki clan and Wano might be very important to the ancient kingdom. It might have been a part of the ancient kingdom, Mm -hmm. which is why, like, Zunisha carries Zo on its back, you know? And, And why... You know, Wano is so cool with Zo and like why they're like, you know, friends or like Nakamas to the end. Mm-hmm. You know, it's why like Inu and Neko allowed Raizo to be on the island and they didn't say anything and they had their arm and leg cut off. Mm-hmm. And it just brings more respectable traits to like what the ancient kingdom might have involved people wise. Mm-hmm. So we might have had Zo. And Zunisha's crime was probably doing something against its, I don't know, the user. Because as we know right now, like, the voice of all things doesn't work for everybody in the same way that the other person has it does. So, like, for example, Luffy couldn't tell Zunisha what to do. Mm -hmm. Momo could, though. So does that make Momonosuke a joy boy? No, I would just say it's probably a special trait that only people of Wano or the Kazuki clan has. Mm-hmm. But it's also why it's tied to Joy Boy, because if they were within the ancient kingdom and they're sort of like cousins or distant relatives, mm-hmm. then that might make them like second cousins of the D clan or something like that, too. And the only person. So if that person said, "Yo, you committed a crime, you have to walk the rest of the seas. Does that mean Joy Boy told Zunisha that she had to walk? Nonstop, like as a crime, because then now that brings the lore to like Joy, but like, are you doing stuff like this, bro? Mm-hmm. Like, this is what you're capable of. <clears throat> I mean, it, it brings into so <laughs> many theoretical, you know, thoughts and hypotheticals that it, it's never ending, and we can only go off the vague inf- information that is, you know, being unfolded. But as we know right now, if somebody like Momonosuke from Wano, because we have to assume this is like a like a Fishman Island Poseidon trait, right? Yeah. Like only mermaids can control the Sea Kings. Right. What if it's only Kazuki clan members can control Zunisha? That means that somebody from the Kazuki clan punished her because of whatever happened. Mm-hmm. It's very interesting. Yeah. Now, just to, I want to add two things to your point is going by that. But two, Phone things, line t- two more minutes. Give it two more minutes. Uh, to add to what you're saying... We think of Gold Roger, right? Who, could, who also had the voice of all things. But he said he needed Odin. He saw mm-hmm. Odin out to finish his journey. Yeah. And to your point. But also, too, uh, we think of Odin's wife. She's from 800 years ago. She was trying to find Wano, found Odin, then married Odin. So she zeroed in on Wano and mm-hmm. Odin. And Gold Roger, who could read the voices, said he needed Odin to help him. So, so it like yeah. goes into your point where like there's something special about Zuzuki Kane or Wano in general because like I was always thinking like Momo, how are you able to hear the voice of like did you inherit that from your father? You know? Is that a special that's being passed down through your generations, you know? You know what's crazier, the big mom conversation mm-hmm. with either Roger. Like it's she's saying, Is this a part of One Piece too? Mm-hmm. Is Wano a part of One Piece? And it's like she knows something about One Piece that we don't, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And it fits into that whole thought process. So I'll say this know. in regards to that. Uh, that's why I did like the other. Tra- that's why I sent the Discord that I like the other translation better because it said, "Are there clues hiding in this country as well?" Instead of like, "Is it a part of One Piece?" Because I thought that was like a weird way to say that, and the clues one just kind of made more sense to yeah. me. Because like, is a piece of One Piece here? That's kind of wild. I mean, maybe that's what it is. Mm-hmm. But that just seemed weird. That seemed weird phrasing for me. But all right. Well, 
That's it for the the, <laughs> the show. We're gonna start taking calls now. So Marv, you want to put that number up? Don't worry, guys. We'll get the show to two hours, and <laughs> and it's gonna be dope as heck. Wait, what about the super chats? We... I'll take oh, the time wait. now to do the super chats. Yeah, let's uh, do the super chats. But yeah, call in the numbers in the in the chat. Uh, f- first off, on Crate Justice says just showing love to the crew, love watching the growth. Yeah, yeah, yeah take, take the call. call. Hey, what's going on? This is Larry from that One Piece talk. Who are you and how are you? Uh, I'm Aaron Tate. I'm good. How are you guys? Hey, hey what's up, man? Aaron, how are you, up? man? I want to see Aaron in the chats. So, what's up, man? Nice hey. to hear from you, Aaron. How you doing? Appreciate you guys. Uh, I did have a question I've been wanting to ask. I know uh, on one of you guys' session, I know, I don't know if all of you guys mentioned this, but I know Seb uh, said this one time in regards to Luffy and Kaido. I know you guys said that Luffy needs to lose again, and I was just trying to figure out why you guys feel that way. I guess, I mean, it's kind of directed at me, but I can go. Yeah, Uh, yeah, go. So basically what I want from this is the same um, beef that Luffy had with Doflamingo. Like, I want that same energy to happen again where, like, everything's going bad and, like, Luffy has to be the one to save it. I don't think we've gotten that, and this is, like— one of the biggest, like, build-up arcs in the series. And I know this is, like, a Morris thing for the raid to fail. I don't necessarily need the raid to fail as a whole. I just want the beef between Luffy and Kaido to be there. So I think him losing again and potentially a, like, law death to save Luffy could bring that level of angst and that level of passion to Luffy that I don't see in the fight. Because, like, the smiling, it's dope. That's just not what I expect of a Luffy big bad fight to end an arc that's this big. So I want, plus Kaido at this point is lacking as a villain um, in overall ferocity. So like if he's able to just, if he's able to instill that fear that even Doflamingo had on Dressrosa where like the whole country was like in terror of what he was doing, I would love to see that. So that's that's why I always say that I need Luffy to lose again. So yeah. I don't know if you guys have more, but. No, I feel the same way. Yeah, yeah I, me also just adding as uh I feel like Luffy has to keep stepping up to get to Kaido. So it's more of also a strength thing. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, Luffy's not, he needs to keep growing and growing. And Luffy's just say what we all know, bro. He ain't there yeah, yet. Yeah, he, he's, he's not, not worthy of a dub over Kaido yet. at this point. And he, ain't, he ain't there yet. <laughs> That's it. So, so listen, real quick, I, I feel you on that. However, I think for him to lose again would add unnecessary length to an already stupidly long arc. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? Like, it, this is already, this is in, in, throughout One Piece, most of the pattern that most of Luffy's fights follows is three rounds and that's it, right? And this is already the third round of uh, him and Kaido fighting. So I, I do understand the fact that you're speaking of is, um, you know, like Kaido needs to up the ante basically and, and Luffy needs to figure out some way to beat him. But I think there is a way to do that without him having to lose again. Mm-hmm. And which adds an extra 20 to 30 <laughs> uh, chapters to the art. You know what I mean? I, I agree. That. I agree with him too. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I mean, I agree with both of you. The, I'm going to be real. So, and this again, I'm, this is, this now I am biting this straight from Morge's mouth. What those losses have done for Luffy is why those losses were necessary. When Luffy gets beaten off panel, that doesn't change the tension. That doesn't change anything for the arc. Luffy came back within five chapters and was on Momo's back, and not, like he might as well have not have lost. Nothing changed. Like the point of Luffy losing is to increase the tension of the fight between him and the person and the stakes. The stakes never changed in Luffy's latest loss to Kaido. So to me, like that's you're box checking now. Like, oh, Luffy's got to lose three times. Check the box. Like, I get versus an actual impactful loss, like yeah. the other losses have had for the arc itself. Yeah. Thank you for the so call, though, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, real quick, so you're saying for him for him to lose, this, this next loss needs to feel like, oh, everything is over. Then he comes back. That's what you're saying? Yes. The, the okay, Luffy coming back, he has to be the one to bring the hope back. Yeah. He didn't do that. He was just like, yo, I'm back. Ah. <laughs> yeah. gotcha. All right. Appreciate that, guys. No, yeah, anytime, yeah. Aaron. Thank you, brother. Mm-hmm. Sheesh. Uh, Read more, that super chat real quick. Yeah, uh, Onion was talking uh, crap don't worry again. About it. <laughs> <laughs> Onion. All right. Hey, what's going on? This is that One Piece talk. My name is Larry. Who are you and how are you? Yo, what's good? It's Chris, number one Joe fan. Hey, Chris! 
Hey, number one up? Zoro fan. That's, hey. a, that's, a, that's a hot take, man. I don't know about that one. <laughs> yo, yo. <laughs> so my question is, um, is this. Um, somewhat off topic, because I know we've been talking about like the latest craft and whatnot. But for the anime, do you guys happen to watch that? Nah, bro. I boycott yeah. it every chance I get. <laughs> uh, so I, I know Larry no, doesn't watch no, it at all. It hasn't Lawrence gotten better. hasn't watched it's like Fishman <laughs> Island. I do keep tabs every now and then for big episodes. They there are good episodes here and there, as you know if you That's, do watch. Uh, but I'll say I'll say um you guys should definitely watch the last couple, especially like after uh episode one thousand, because in my opinion um, the anime is doing a great job of answering a lot of the questions that we used to have when reading the manga. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, we're talking about, like, these off-panel losses, these off-panel battles. Um, two episodes ago, I'm blinking on the number. Nami, Usopp versus uh, Page One and Ulti. Yeah. They showed the entire battle. Mm -hmm. they, showed, they showed Nami getting hit with the headbutt, like, two, three times. Usopp getting hit with the headbutt two, three times. You see uh, Ulti using hockey while using the headbutt, Chris, which I did not Chris, know. Chris, 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 the anime spoiled Zoro's Conqueror's hockey moment. Like, it was completely oh, trash. Man. What are we talking so, about? Here's my kind of argument for that. Here, here's my kind of argument. Come for that. On, no counter, I, think, I, think, I think King of Lightning, I think King of Lightning said it's uh, beautiful. Like, you can say that in one instance, yeah, the anime spoiled it. But a lot of people were complaining, like, when they showed Conqueror's hockey. On the rooftop, they thought like Zoro just got that nowhere. Like how how was he able to do that? Like it was kind of elite. No, so at least with it, the anime. Like if you never read the manga, like if you never read the manga and you only watch the anime, it will actually make sense once it gets to the rooftop. You know why it made sense? Because he had Odin's blade, and they sensed Odin's presence yeah. in the blade. There was a great explanation for why that could be, but also because Zoro was in a dire situation. You know what I'm saying? Like like Lauren said, right? Like Rayleigh yeah. says, your hockey blooms through adversity. He was going through an adverse moment. In the anime, he just drinking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are we man. talking about, bro? That doesn't even follow the <laughs> consistency of the story. Hey, thank you That's for the call, true. man. I mean, we saw hints of it, but I feel you. I feel you on that. I, in my personal opinion, the anime has actually been like really good. Like the quality. Listen, uh, man, I'll have you call yeah. up and then you tell me how it went, bro. Chris is drinking whatever Zoro was drinking. <laughs> nah, Chris is drinking water. Dude. And just Congress <laughs> hockey just spread it, bro. But yo, Chris, yo, thank you for the call, joke. brother. Y'all a joke. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. I love you guys. Huge fan. Nah, hey, huge fan of you, you, man. Thank appreciate you. Appreciate you. Bro. Please call again. <sighs> All right, we had an Onion Super Chat said, I can't be disappointed if I didn't have any faith to begin with in regards to Kid, <laughs> as you always know. Thank you for the 15, Onion. And he, and he hit, a, hit us with another one. This you is, hit again? Yeah, $10 Super Chat say, this is out of spite for Seb beefing with me. <laughs> <laughs> Onion, you know I love you, man. Thank I love you, you bro. Man. Really gave us $10 for and that. And we got another Super Chat, but it didn't have a comment. So it was from Buddhist Afta. Uh, it was twenty dollars. We appreciate hey, that. Buddhist, thank you so much for mm -hmm. the twenty. I, we you. really oh. appreciate it yeah. a lot. Thank you. Thank Next you. Next time, comment you. so we can shout yeah. you out. Listen, you guys better start commenting. We won't, <laughs> we're not gonna accept your money if you're not gonna yeah. comment. Like, why do we want it if we don't hear from you? <laughs> yeah. Also, everybody, if you're not already in our Discord, join the Discord. We have conversations yeah. like this. Even though we're not debating heavy this episode, we do debate in the freaking Discord, and we give a lot of our opinions in there, and Sebastian's always wrong. I'm always <laughs> right. So I'm always, just every come single through. argument we have in Discord, no, somebody not, leans my not. direction at some point. No, nah, because they don't it's know what true. they be talking about. It's true. A lot of people that follow you, bro, don't really follow you. You just... <laughs> You're just entertaining, bro. Listen, man. That's it. Nah, bro. Yeah, bro. Marv, hey. Marv doesn't like when we fight, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Marv shaking his head. Oh, uh, man. Marv, we have any more calls? No, no more calls? That's All good. Right. That's cool. I, I mean, we got a minute it's left. Time. Yeah, it's, it's time. Overall, I do want to appreciate everybody that uh, ended up donating. Uh, hopefully, Empirical Purity comes into the chat if he's not already in Empirical it. Empirical not here today. He's not? All right. Anyway, you're a moderator, bro. So you're about congrats to, get, to you. You're about to get demodded. Yeah, you're about no. to get demodded now because you're not here. I, I get. I upped him so hard. Not even here now. I told you to reach out before you announced it. Yeah, my He's upset. We Yo, get it's, to it's super bad time. Is super gamer guy here? SGG is here. You, what's up? Oz is here. Oz, what's up, man? Kaylee is here. <laughs> Kevin Salinas. Peter, I see Peter. you. 
Peter. God oh, the man. Usopp. Yeah, I appreciate all you guys for just coming through, Trick. I see you, man. Listen, we 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 love debating and we love doing this and we're out of time. But I just want to say, make sure you like the video, <laughs> share it, comment, uh, post it on your grandma's Facebook, whatever you need to do. Let it, you know, just yeah. give it vibes. But all I want to say is thank you. Yo, um, we got uh, Kyle Kelson says, Ayo, Yellow Frog from TikTok. Yellow uh, Frog, yo, that's yo, my guy. Tris says, Seb's camera debates are better than his Discord ones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Poison says Larry has the worst takes I've ever seen on the server, to be honest. <laughs> Tariq says Who said that? Larry misses the most. <laughs> <laughs> nah, bro. I don't be missing, bro. I don't ever miss. I'm a hundred from the oh, three-point line. Oh, and Chris just uh, donated a $10 Chris, super chat hey, to hey. say Zoro is greater than the law. All uh, right. Take, <laughs> take your money back. <laughs> take your money back. Uh, yo, that's a good. We, that that's video a, is popping off on our channel. Listen, it's a debate. It's a yeah. real debate. Yeah, it's... Hold on, we gotta go, right? We Mark? gotta go. All right, my bad. <laughs> all right, anyway, guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you all. Jana! Jana! <laughs> <laughs>